The design of Topps' 1988 baseball cards looks similar to its 1966 counterpart, with a solid color banner now bridging across the front's lower right corner, as opposed to the upper left. Bold capital letters show each player's team on the top, and that's pretty much it, resulting in a very simple look. The back show full career stats that highlight both the player's minor and major league stints on an orange colored stock. The major rookie in this set is of Tom Glavin, though the release also boasts first tops cards of Matt Williams, David Cohn, Fred McGriff, and Greg Maddox, all of whom were introduced in the 1987 traded set. Seven record breaker cards kick off the run, with five turn back the clocks, 22 all-star selections, and 26 team leaders sporadically popping up. Five future stars make their return, as does another 10 car tops rookie team showcasing everyone's favorite Gold Cup graphic. 792 cards make up the base set, with an additional five variations creating a master set. On Mark McGuire's record breaker card number three, the red background by his left foot was filled in with white, as if it were part of his shoe. It was soon removed. Eddie Murray's record breaker number four comes with and without a caption on front that states the switch hitting record he set. Al Leiter's rookie card number 18 shows another Yankee rookie, Steve George, who never appeared in the majors. The card was later printed with the correct photo. The fourth checklist, card number 528, lists different players next to box number 455. The first attempt advertised Steve Carlton, though he didn't appear at all in this release. His last tops card was in the 87 traded set. Dodgers pitcher Sean Hillegas, who does appear on that card number, was eventually given his proper due. Finally, the front lettering on card number 778, Keith Comstock, that spells Padres, was at first printed in white and then corrected in blue to match the style of all other San Diego cards. An uncorrected error in Brian Holton's number 338 has his 1987 ERA printed as .389 and not 3.89. This collection, as were many of the 1988 top sets I've completed, was hand collated from tons of wax, rack, and cello packs found in pretty much any store that existed, they were everywhere. Those of us who loved the prior year's set were already sold on whatever tops had lined up. Nothing too flashy or rare here, and some of us even enjoy using these cards for TTM. It took a while for me to find the variations, but now that they've been gathered, this master set is complete. Tops continued its zealous plan to flood the marketplace with cardboard, and releasing their 1989 baseball set by the millions. Like its predecessor, it also features 792 cards and has a simple design. A solid wavy banner that makes up the team name graphic contains each player's name. A thin border holds the large space for each photo, and the backs are printed on the same cheap stock, this time in black and reddish hues. Rookie cards of John Smoltz, Greg Biggio, Gary Sheffield, and Randy Johnson are found in this set. As with the previous year, returning are seven record breakers, five turn back the clocks, 22 all-stars, 26 team leaders, five future stars, and 10 Topps rookie team members. For the first time, Topps included 10 number one picks from the previous year's draft. This collection is found with an additional 12 player cards, which make up 14 variations for a fun adventure in putting together a master set. Let's look at the similar grouping first, then examine the rest in numerical order. All five Future Star selections have at least one variation with a change in the border template size. They are Steve Searcy, number 167, Greg Jeffries, 233, Gary Sheffield, 343, Sandy Alomar Jr., 648, and Mike Harkey, 742. See how the full border, which includes the Future Star's text, is stretched vertically? The photos were not adjusted, there's just more picture to see on some. Sheffield's card has three different looks, a fuller picture due to the stretched template, a shorter picture with the top's logo near his collar, and the same short picture with the company's logo shifted lower. Orestes Destrade, card number 27, has his printing sheet designation shown as both F and EF. Felix Fermin's number 303 has the card showing one or two asterisks on the sheet F designation line. Jimmy Williams, 594, has the space above the J in J's, colored with white, and also blue, like it should be. Bob Welch's 605 has the complete pitching record text missing on its back, 
it was soon corrected. The Turn Back the Clock of Tony Oliva, number 665, is found with and without a copyright line on its reverse. Stan Jefferson, number 689, has a colored triangle on the front's bottom left corner. Three variations show the polygon as pink, blue, and also violet. Finally, Franklin Stubbs, number 697, shows the Dodgers team name in either white or a corrected gray. I'm currently down to three variations to make this master set complete. Between 1987 and 1991, Topps made a small fortune selling wax and rack packs thanks in part to me alone. This is the height of what we know as junk wax, but the sets are needed to finish the 1980s decade from Topps, and we love collecting them nonetheless.